happened years ago, the huge ice mass which covered North America began to recede northward. As they withdrew, mountains were carved, rivers formed, and like pine. Today, 10% of Earth's land mass is covered by glacial ice. Antarctica is the largest glacier mass, comprising 4,900,000 square miles. Alaska ranks seventh with 20,000 square miles, and the continental United States is 15th with 200 square miles. Creation of a glacier begins with the delicate form of a snowflake. When snow falls to Earth, flakes join together into grains of ice with bubbles of air trapped inside. As the weight of snow increases, the icy clumps form large solid fields of ice. An increase in pressure from the weight of the ice forces out the trapped air bubbles, turning airy white snow into airless blue ice. An ice field continues to grow, with additional snowfall turning to ice crystals. When it gets to a depth of approximately 60 feet, the ice mass begins to move. A glacier is an ice field in motion. As it moves, it crushes everything in its path, pebbles to boulders. As rocks are carried along, they're ground finer and finer until they're the consistency of flour. This rock flower is carried away by meltwater and turns seawater a gray-brown color. When two glaciers meet and form a larger flow, the rocks carried along their connected sides become a medial moraine a line of crushed earth down the center of the newly enlarged glacier. Rocks and boulders left at the glacier's edge, or snout, are also called moraines. Worthington Glacier provides an excellent illustration of this rocky debris. Even in the flows which break from the edge of an ice shelf, you'll see evidence of the glacier's power to literally move mountains. There are three types of glaciers, mountain, ice cap, and ice sheet. Mountain glaciers start in snowfields located, appropriately enough, atop mountains. Repeated snowfall and freezing temperatures allow the snow and ice to reach the depths necessary to start the flow of the ice fields. They move downward through valleys until reaching the snow line where they melt during summer months. Mountain glaciers can be miles long and are subject to avalanches. The largest glacier in Alaska is Malaspina Glacier, located between Glacier Bay and Valdez. It is 60 miles long. If the weather is cold enough, the glacier doesn't melt, but instead flows out over level ground. Such a flow is called a Piedmont glacier. Larger than mountain glaciers are ice caps, the most famous example of which is Iceland. These ice fields are so thick, they completely bury mountains. Ice sheets are the largest of the three glacial types. Antarctica is an ice sheet and covers more land than the United States, Mexico, and Central America combined. Where a glacier meets the sea, it forms an ice shelf. At Mendenhall Glacier, you can experience being at close range to such a formation. When sections of the shelf break off, the glacier is said to be calving, and the floating sections are icebergs.
In Glacier Bay and at Columbia Glacier, it's possible to lower a tender to collect an icy remnant of a nearby glacier. Crewmen must be alert to the danger of large ice flows as well as to the mini tidal waves caused when a glacier calves. Winter, with its cold temperatures, is a slow time for glacial movement. But with warm winds and summer sunshine, icy activity speeds up. Some northern Alaskan glaciers can move as little as six inches per year. But others, with the advent of summer heat, race along at up to 100 feet per day. The thicker the glacier, the faster it moves. Increased weight means increased pressure which in turn means increased temperatures at the bottom of the glacier. As meltwater forms, the glacier slides along on a layer of liquid. A glacier moves quickest in the center, more slowly towards its sides. As the ice moves, it bends and cracks, causing crevices. Some of these are small enough to step over. Others form deadly traps for unsuspecting mountain climbers. Glaciers create magnificent landscapes as they flow over the terrain. From their beginnings on mountaintops, they shape the earth as they make their way toward the sea. Sharp peaks indicate that most of a mountain has been carried away by ice. at the top right of the screen, a cirque is a hollow formed when a glacier scrapes away the surrounding rocks. Waterfalls cascade where crevices once scarred the mountainside. Smooth, round valley floors show where a glacier flowed out over more level terrain. And another landscape legacy are hanging glaciers. As their name suggests, they hang on the side of a mountain. They're formed when ice retreats from a main glacier, leaving its tributaries stranded on a mountainside. It comes as a surprise to some people to learn that there are fjords in Alaska. Near Seward are the Kenai Fjords, named for the peninsula on which they're found. And just outside of Ketchikan, an excursion in a float plane takes you to see the misty fjords. Fjords are prehistoric relics of glacial activity. They were formed when glaciers gouged out a valley, which at one time was below sea level. Later, when the ice melted, the glacier receded and sea level rose, the valleys were flooded. The lakes which were formed are beautiful blue, crystal clear remnants of the Ice Age. The shelf across the mouth of the fjord marks the end moraine of the original glacier.
Approaching the sea, the original path of a glacier is marked by a widening valley path. Flying over fjords is only one way to enjoy the spectacular natural beauty of Alaska. There are several ways to experience the grandeur of the glaciers. A helicopter flight allows you to land on the surface of a glacier and learn about the ice formation from a knowledgeable guide. There are trips which combine glacier flight seeing with a fascinating introduction to Alaska's Indian heritage. Or you can combine the cozy comfort of a remote mountain lodge, a roaring fire, fresh grilled salmon, and a glacier view as the scenic backdrop. Portage Glacier provides an informative visitor center and the chance to walk along a glacier's edge. And of course, you can marvel at the beauty of glaciers as you cruise alongside them. Columbia, La Perouse, and Bear Glaciers, as well as spectacular Glacier Bay, are visited by ship. 100 miles northwest of Juneau is Glacier Bay National Park. Established in 1925, it has an area of 4,375 square miles. Post-glacial forests have taken root where once there were only rocky moraines. More than 40 glaciers descend from two parallel mountain ranges, St. Elias on the east and Fairweather on the west. Muir Glacier, approximately two miles wide, is one of the most active. Because the bay has a fragile ecological balance, no more than two ships are ever allowed in at one time. This ruling provides the calm serenity which marks a visit to Glacier Bay. The southeastern part of Glacier Bay is home to spruce and hemlock forests, Alaska brown bears, grizzlies, seals, whales, and is a spawning ground for salmon. The glacier bear, a bluish-gray subspecies, is also found in southern Alaska. Knowing where to find a wildlife viewing area comes from years of patient observation.
from the comfort of your cruise ship, from an up-close and personal vantage point, or from cloud-strewn height, Alaska's glaciers are Ice Age reminders of nature's glory.